liberation greetings to all and sundry my people of southern cameroons my dear people of Amazonia, accept greetings from me today comrade john akuro and today is may 29 and this is sunday 2022 i bring greetings to everyone wherever you are be on ground zero ground one ground two or completely in the diaspora. And of course, I also extend hearty greetings to all the supporters and sympathizers of the Southern Cameroons, aka Ambazonia cause for freedom. I want to extend special salutes to Comrade Julius Malema in South Africa for the wonderful job that we all observed that they did. My people, of Amazonia. This communication today is focused specifically to uh, responding. I just hate even to use the word responding, but to addressing Mr. Frundi, who has become Mr. Paul Bia or La Republic's latest surrogate. I mean, intended to kind of drown the thoughts the minds, the wishes, and the aspirations of the people of the Southern Cameroons. Mr. Bia notices that they have tried force and it hasn't gone. They have tried all sorts of tactics, bribery, corruption, and everything, and it hasn't gone. And so the only thing they need to do now is to play on the minds of the people, on the souls of the people. And he thinks that he's going to use the one last supposed dinosaur that uh, Frundi apparently, or in, his, or in his eyes, still represents to try and turn the people against their own, um, <laughs> you know, wishes, against their own project, a project we have held so close to our minds for over six years today. My people of Southern Cameroons, before I get there, and especially, hang on, don't move, because this is a very important communication. Make sure as you listen, as you watch, share with others so that all may hear this because we have to be informed, sensitized enough to stay clear of some of these stupid uh, manipulations from La Republique du Cameroon. Of course, no one doubts anymore why La Republic du Cameroon citizens, especially those in the top administration, will do everything to send poor people's children, the talks, to Ambazonia to go to their early graves. It is because they have instances in Ambazonia, in southern Cameroons, where they make a lot of illicit money on the international scene. And that is why they will prefer that everyone dies rather than getting out of Ambazonia, which is the most logical thing to do. But thank God, the people of Ambazonia, the people of the Southern Cameroons are determined that we must get these people out of our land. That is why I continue to come on this platform from time to time to launch this patriotic call on all and sundry to remain glued to the objective of our liberation movement. Remain focused. Stay focused always on that trip, on that journey that we have all engaged together heading towards Boya. And when I refer to Boya, I'm talking to Freedom Land. My people, we've all heard that so many groups in the United States of America sued a company called Glencore a Glencoe, an oil company known as Glencoe, and that the officials of that company have finally confessed that they have been doling out a lot of money to corrupt officials in a number of African countries, including Cameroon, in order to get oil concessions. And for the case of Cameroon, these oil and gas concessions are in the southern Cameroons. And so it has come to pass that Glencoe, Sites officials at Sonara. And where is Sonara located? In Victoria. In Ambazonia. 
that they cited officials there and in the SNH to whom they have given as much as 7 billion CFA funds as bribe so that they could give them access or enable them to secure oil concessions in our land. For this simple reason, my people of Amazonia, do you expect any of them to want to go anywhere? Do you expect any of them to sit back and watch us take back our land, take back food, illicit food from their mouths? That is why they are ready to manipulate and manipulate and manipulate until they can manipulate no more. And all those packs of lies are falling, falling, falling. I know we have all listened to Munzu, Simon, because Simon Munzu has stayed a long time in limbo, dancing, marching, doing all kinds of things, thinking they will call him to the table. They haven't done yet. The truth is beginning to come out, even if he's still playing around the peripheries. But the Munzu case is a case in point because I'm coming back to Munzu in two days. I will play his audio and we shall listen to it and talk about it point by point. My people of the Southern Cameroons, the leaders of your revolutionary movement have never lied to you about the need for our freedom. All the activists and all our people, be them on ground zero or in the diaspora, who have reason to tell you that this freedom is our inalienable right, they never lie to you. Listen, I'm saying late Chief uh, Ete Oton Ayamba never lied to you. Late Abel Mukong never lied to you. No. Late Molan Jolly Tumbe never lied to you. Late Justice Ebongalame never lied to you. Listen, my people, this freedom we are seeking is our God-given right. And listen, the right to self-determination is inalienable. And so we must stay glued to it. I want to go. And that is why I get into this subject matter by celebrating one of us. In fact, he's one of my heroes. Don Dinga. Don Dinga, my brother. Wherever you are, I know you're listening to me. Take one man, like we say commonly, in my name. Because you are doing an incredible job. Look at this. His message is directed at somebody like Fundi. Directed at every other person that sits and thinks you can manipulate the people by trying to let them think that they are lying to them. That they are a country. That they used to be a country and that they remain a country that has been stolen and which must be forced out of the mouth of the occupier. And you can see that's La Republic du Cameroon there struggling in vain to swallow Ambazonia, my people. Just look at where the hands of Ambazonia are on the throat. And La Republic du Cameroon, oh, my brother Dondinga, will be forced to vomit out Ambazonia. Because that's the only thing that they, are, that they have to do. Nothing more. Now, let's take a quick look at some of the things that happened in La Republic du Cameroon these past days before we delve into the subject matter of our conversation today. Now, take, just take a look at this picture. Look at this picture. This picture is of Dutch Vela. Of course, it's a, a German-based, powerful international media house, Dutch Vela. And the title of it, Losing His Grip on Power. Let me tell you, let me say this. You see, this poster announces a big production on the man, Paul Bia, on the vegetable now, the vegetable now known as Paul Bia. But this came shortly after an editorial was broadcast on RFE that rattled Mr. Paul Bia's government beyond imagination because for once the french outfit decided to say the unmitigated truth that paul bia is no longer in control and so because he is no longer in control he doesn't even know what is happening anywhere now 
It is the boogie bar syndrome. They just tell him that he is president. He just knows that it seems he is president of some country, but he doesn't even know where he is. And that is why people now hide under him, use his presence there to try and see how they loot Ambazonia as much as possible. I don't give a damn to what they are doing in La Republic du Cameroon. That's their business. Because the people there have been motivated and pushed by us for far too many years to rise so that we could get a better country, but they never paid heat. On the contrary, they prefer to victimize us and even call us Le Bamenda. Because that is how when anything started happening, when the government was taking an odd measure, they start asking, Bamenda va accepter ça? That would Bamenda accept this? So their yardstick was a matter of Bamenda. That is a reference to Southern Cameroonians. But they forgot that this thing was affecting everybody. Today, we are claiming our right. Today, we are reclaiming our country. Today, we are asserting our independence. So let them bloody take care of themselves and uh, their own aspirations. But I will talk about beer as to what concerns the Southern Cameroons. So just take a quick listen. This is about seven minutes long, but I'm not going to play it. Or I'm just going to play except and we talk about it very quickly and move into the subject matter of our discussion of today. Cameroon's president was seen in public this week for the first time in months. Paul Beer usually spends a lot of time out of the country, but in recent times, there's been much speculation about his health and mental fitness. Now, Beer showed up at the annual National Day celebrations in the capital, Yaoundé, but this year, he didn't give a State of the Nation address, which he usually does the day before. Beer has been president of Cameroon for almost 40 years, and at 89, he is the oldest president and the second longest serving head of state in Africa. And with me in studio now is our reporter from Cameroon, Blaze Eong. Blaze, it's good to have you at the table. We'll talk a little bit about your reporting that's brought you here in a moment. But let's begin by what we've just seen. What do you make or what are we to make of President Beer not giving his usual speech in the run-up to National Day celebrations? Christian, you must understand that Beer has always portrayed himself as this tough guy who does exactly what he wants or only what he wants. Secondly, there are a lot of speculations in and out of Cameroon about the state of Bia's health. He's almost 90 years old. In fact, he's the oldest uh, leader in the African continent. So that doesn't look so good. Before this National Day celebration, Bia was in Switzerland. Okay, Blaise, let's talk about the reporting that you've been doing in Cameroon that's also brought you to Germany. Tell us about that. Rights groups have reported ab abuse by the state security forces and by the government of President Paul Beer. I have been in rallies, I have been in events in Cameroon where people's rights, you would see that people's rights have been violated. So I've spoken to Cameroonians in Cameroon, but I also wanted to understand what has made so many Cameroonians to go on exile. That is why I came to Germany and here's my report. Kawala once ran to be Cameroon's president. Now she makes protest videos for social media. She and her supporters take big risks speaking out against the government of Paul Bia. It is our lives. It is our lives. It's our so survival. We don't say because there was an initiative yesterday, we will not do one today. We will do today. If this one fails, we will do tomorrow and the next day until we have our fundamental freedoms and rights as Cameroonians. She's fighting for freedom of expression, for democracy, for the right to gather and to protest. At the moment, she keeps the fight limited to social media and this compound. She knows she'll be in trouble if she takes her fight outside. This man took his protest all the way to Cameroon's parliament. I want to give you a quote here in this house that I borrowed from the American liberators. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. The people of West Cameroon have a duty to resist your oppression. Joseph Weber was an opposition MP, but that speech he made went viral. He says the authorities threatened him so much, he left Cameroon. <laughs> this week, he's meeting other exiles in Germany. Now, I will pause that report. I may come back to it. But you see, why am I bringing this? 
I want to say, increasingly, the international media, the powerful international media that has resisted paying serious heed to what is happening in the southern Cameroons, forget about La Republic du Cameroon, sometimes I say in the Cameroons, today they can resist it no more. They can stay quiet no more. They can avoid it no more because it has become so strong and so serious. I know that Blaise uh, is unaware that uh, Paul Bia generally doesn't uh, address the nation on the eve of 20th May. Of course, he does on the eve of 11th of February and he does on uh, New Year's Eve. And then besides those two moments, he can do any other time that he cares. But he never does on the eve of 20th May because clearly they know it is a lie that they've been celebrating. Because the history of 20th May is about a big lie, a huge manipulation, an attempt, an attempt to steal and swallow another country, Ambazonia, which never worked. So for that reason, coming to make speeches on the eve of 20th May will be shooting themselves in the leg. That's why Mr. Bia has never done. Although that is supposed to be the right thing to do. Because every other leader addresses their country on the eve of their independence day, of their national day, of the day that everyone celebrates. What is La Republique du Cameroon celebrating on 20th May? They themselves can't tell. They can't tell. How can unitary, that is the advent of a unitary state become national day? Not even, not even October 1, that was the day that, uh, or that, uh, you know, both Cameroons came together again, or that when the Southern Cameroons achieved it in its independence and then joined La Republique in some quasi kind of union that never worked. Or why not February 11, that represents the day that there was that plebiscite for Southern Cameroonians to determine that rather than joining Nigeria after achieving independence, we would join La Republique du Cameroon. And why not January 1, which is actually the Independence Day of La Republique du Cameroon? Or for that matter, celebrate Dual Independence Day, October 1 for Southern Cameroons and January 1 for La Republique du Cameroon. You pick to celebrate a lie. And of course, because of the fair power of all Amazonians, both on ground zero and in the diaspora, People who hitherto told us that, oh, national unity is important, we should do this. They are now speaking the truth. Like I said earlier, you listened to Munzu. I will come back to him. But now look at, you see, the international community cannot forget that little except. Where Honorable Weber, in the House of Assembly of La Republic of Cameroon, told them that when injustice becomes law, resistance will become a duty. And of course, that is why we are resisting to date. Because it is our duty to resist La Republic of Cameroon all the way until we get them out of our land. Increasingly, citizens of La Republic of Cameroon, of course, we all followed Maître Chapi Lavoisier, make it clear increasingly today that May 20 is a lie. That there is no reason that to celebrate May 20 because it is a lie. He is of the opposition Social Democratic Front, the SDF, and he is one of those who stood for a boycott of that event because it's a non-event as far as he and other reasonable citizens of La Republic the Cameroon are concerned. Five, six years running, we are gradually sensitizing citizens of La Republic du Cameroon to understand that they have an occupational force in the southern Cameroons, that they are intruders in the southern Cameroons, and that they should pack out of our country and get back to their country, because that is the right thing to do. So my people of Ambazonia, my people of the southern Cameroons, so increasingly, you hear in that report, they say, Bia was in Switzerland. What for? For treatment. Bia was up. Bia was down. The whole world now knows that he's vegetable. Much as the cameras hit the whole thing from everyone at the 20th May Avenue in Yaoundé. 
because no cell phone was allowed. They feared people could actually snap Mr. Paul Bia being carried from his car to the tribune, being carried from the tribune to his car and all of those things. Those who were there, the members of the diplomatic community were there live. So they could not ask them to close their eyes while this thing was happening. So the whole world is seeing and the whole world is talking about it. And that is why even the international media that previously could be shy about it are now emboldened to say, no, but wait a minute. There is something not going right here. And this is a time, my people of Amazonia, where we have to become more solidified. And because La Republique du Cameroon is, I mean, I was a PhD in make-believe. As soon as the international media unleashes, that's RFE followed by Dutch Vela and all. Of course, the actor, the French ambassador to Cameroon, runs to the Unity Palace to try and have this photo up with Paul Bia and then to kind of give the impression to everyone that, no, you see, Mr. Bia is strong, he's solid. He's standing strong. He's still in charge. I mean, nothing is happening to him. That's the reason that of this photo, of this picture. We all recall that the time when Paul Bia was nowhere to be found, it is this same one whom we found almost becoming the spokesperson of uh, La Republique du Cameroon, this uh, French ambassador to Yaoundé. Of course, so this picture, this photo up that I, that I, I made on uh, Mr. Paul Bia's Twitter account, it was simply... And I put like to tell people that I'm active. All those things that they are saying is a lie. I'm still doing, I'm still able. And why is France playing this role? Why are the French doing this? Why would it always be the French ambassador and not someone else? This is because France's only hope in retaining Ambazonia is in making sure they continue to have solid control in La Republic du Cameroon. And because for now, La Republic of Cameroon is like a, a powder magazine with a, I mean, with a deadly power toss already going on. Effecting a change right now, they know, will be very deadly and difficult and will be, I mean, a simple pass to the Southern Cameroon, to Ambazonia, to go their separate way. That is why for the French today, they have to do everything, even if it is putting BR on life support, to continue being there. That is why you find that visit. My people of Ambazonia, my people of the Southern Cameroons, we all know what is going on. Of course, we have seen one official detains someone for corruption, the next official frees that person. One official said this one, we saw it with uh, Emil Parfait Sims. He was picked up, engineered by the Delegate General for National Security, two days after, 48 hours after he set free by. I mean, <laughs> a serious network manned by the Laurent Essos, uh, Louis Paul Mortazes, the Amogo Bellingers, and the others. They set him free. At the same time, we saw that come. They detain the uh, chief of center for taxes in the center, in the center region of La Republic du Cameroon, a lady. And the same evening, Ferdinand Gongo, who mans his own Camo Chantabia and others, got her set free the same moment. That is what it is in La Republic du Cameroon, a country that is in a powder magazine. And when all this is going on, the people are still setting a serious scene for their major tournament. That I keep saying, because La Republic du Cameroon has a Champions League that is coming. Nobody should miss it. And always remember that I say this, I mean, a serious Champions League. If you doubt, have an avant goût here. l'arsenal l'arsenal de la police qui est là pour nous empêcher de marcher. Pourtant, nous, faisons, nous voulons faire une marche pacifique. Les doigts-là ont perdu les terres dans ce pays que tout le monde. Nos terres ont été pris. 
on a laissé parce que c'est le Cameroun, c'est le bien de nous tous. Mais qu'un individu venant de l'Ouest Cameroun vienne détrôner un village que le monde entier voie. Moi, je ne suis pas un bon Et c'est comme ça. Moi, je suis un Daido. Et c'est comme ça. Vous allez finir tous les doigts là. Et c'est comme ça que le Vous allez finir tous les doigts là. C'est comme ça. Le Nosa a commencé comme ça. Si vous continuez comme ça, on va compter les âmes. Nous n'avons rien que doigts là. C'est le saint qui nous reste. C'est le saint qui nous reste. Je suis blessé dans mon âme. Je suis blessé dans mon âme. On n'est pas contre le développement. Mais prenez le cas d'une manière honnête. Prenez le cas d'une manière honnête. Vous ne délogez pas les gens. Vous exhumez nos parents. Vous tuez nos enfants. Pour un individu, il n'a pas un village. Il n'a pas un village. Si ça continue comme ça, ils vont tous nous tuer. Le nozo a commencé comme ça. Si vous portez les armes, on va porter les armes. Je ne me cache pas. S'il faut porter les armes, on portera les armes. La seule chose qui nous reste au Cameroun, c'est droit là. S'ils veulent prendre nos terres, qu'ils prennent nos terres d'une manière honnête. Ce n'est pas parce qu'un individu a corrompu le gouvernement. Ce n'est pas parce qu'un individu a corrompu le gouvernement. Je ne suis pas un bon anjo. Je suis un daïdo. Je suis un bon antéki. Et je vais mourir pour mes frères du canton Bell. À trop, c'est trop. Trop, c'est trop. Non, c'est trop. Le nozo a commencé ici. Le nozo a commencé ici. Le nozo a commencé ici. Vous, pouvez, vous allez tout nous prendre. Mais vous l'avez. So, you hear them. I know what you retain most will be that le nozo a commencé ici. That is the bastardly uh, approach or expression that they use. And describing the southern Cameroon, they say no, so no, northwest, southwest. The no, so how come and say and see. And now, my people, for those of, uh, of us who don't understand French, I want to do a quick paraphrase. So, these gentlemen, they are representatives of the Sawa people. They were out on the streets in Douala two days ago in huge numbers to protest against what they have now considered the state-sponsored confiscation of their land through state-sponsored corruption, through extremely corrupt means. And they are kicking the people out into the streets without expropriating anyone, without giving anyone indemnity, without indemnifying them. Some few people just given some, you know, few banknotes and asked to leave. And they have nowhere at all that they have been resettled. But what is interesting in that particular deal is that this is land, people's private land, that the state, through the Ministry of Land Tenure, decides to expropriate and claims that they are expropriating this land in the public interest. It becomes in the public domain or it will become part of what is called the private domain of the state so that the state should use that piece of land for public utility. But what is this public utility that some individual wants to build a hotel and claims that that construction is part of the Marriott, the Marriott hotel chains that we know in the United States. But my people, at the end of the day, this is what comes out. And this is what makes the people mad. Because at the end of the day, it comes out that this land, this entire experience, of land which represents an entire neighborhood is taken to be given to one gentleman of Bamileke extraction but wait a minute clearer findings indicate that this gentleman is not actually the owner you know they say this there's an African proverb that says this that when you find a toad dancing in broad daylight look well the drama is hiding somewhere in the bush nearby so what happens is at the end of the day it's been very clear that from the presidency of the republic some individuals decided to get this land and to hide themselves they call a fronter a young bamelke guy and front him to put his name there and then they claim he's the one whereas in effect this is actually the son of the head of state 
Frank Emmanuel Bia, along with the director of the civil cabinet, whose project this is. But now what is interesting here is they now expose an entire clan. Because now the ire of the Dwala people is not against the regime, not against the system, but against the Bamelike people. And you see the fragmentation here. They stay behind. They set them up and they cause them to be killing each other. Why am I relating this? Because this is exactly what they have tried to do in the southern Cameroons. They've tried to set up the forest zone people against those from the gas field and claim that that was the division that we had by the time we were emerging as a country. Whereas the southern Cameroons never knew northwest, southwest as divisions. Those never existed as provinces. They never existed. No. So my people of the southern Cameroons, I'm showing this to let us get an avant goût a foretaste of what is about to come in La Republic du Cameroon. The chaos is going to be unimaginable. That is why for La Republic du Cameroon, it is so urgent right now to weaken us by attacking the minds, by attacking the morale of the people, by attacking our belief in our movement, by attacking our conviction that Ambazonia is real, by attacking the very foundation of what we hold here, my people of Ambazonia, they know that the biggest thing they can do is set doubt and confusion in the minds of the people and the rest will follow by itself. The whole thing was cut like a pack of cards. Listen, my dear people of Ambazonia, listen, fellow Southern Cameroon, Ambazonia is as real as life and death. And there is nothing that's going to stop it. Bear that in mind. As we continue our conversation and moving now to the crux of the matter, bear that in mind. And hold that fundamental truth close to your chest. Don't forget that even early skeptics on the international scene, like Ambassador Thibault Nagy, a former U.S. Undersecretary of State for African Affairs at the Bureau of African Affairs, who said in Congress that no thinking about Southern Cameroon or Ambazonia as independent on its own could seem unrealistic. But just two to three years after, he has said, I mean, without mincing words, triumphantly, that it is just a matter of time. Because Ambazonians will get exactly what they want. Did you hear that? And now that is why La Republic du Cameroon in total confusion and destruction continue to bring some expired good. Expired because it was a good. That's what I'm talking about Fundi. Fundi, there was a time he was a good. He was a man. At least we believed that he was a freedom fighter. We believed that he was somebody who believed in the ideals of total freedom of the people of the Southern Cameroons. And that was just going to be a matter of time for him to actually join the real cause for which the SDF was created. But over time, he allowed himself to be used to become an instrument in the hands of the same oppressor from whom our mothers, our brothers, our sisters died protecting him. I'm talking about Fundi. This same Fundi, if anyone remembers 1992 when a state of emergency was declared by La Republic du Cameroon in Bamenda where Frundi and all the officials of his party were locked at his Tarikon residence. That is when we knew about the emergence of the Takumbans. Our mothers and grandmothers to guard around Frundi's compound to protect him from Mr. Paul Bia's talks. A good lot of us were ready to die, to let Fundi live, because we all believed that that was the man who understood what our people wanted, and who was ready to go to all ends to ensure that the wishes and aspirations of the people for freedom will be attained. But little did we know that along the line, he will become a weakling, get corrupt, lose faith in the same struggle for which we were fighting, and revert 
to simply grabbing his own share of the national cake as best he could. For years, we were told, but we refused to listen. And I remember so painfully the dictum that when people tell you or show you who they are, believe them. Because we refused to believe Frundi after 2010 when he met with and shook hands with Paul Bia at Up Station in Bamenda. Because from that moment to this day, Frundi has become a different person. The wishes and aspirations of the people were no longer his concern. He lost faith even in the same struggle that he stood up claiming he was fighting, but never told the people and allowed the people to continue dying, to continue suffering, to continue losing careers, losing property, losing businesses, losing everything in support of someone who had completely abandoned the ideals for which people were supporting him. But of course, he just needed our liberation movement, the movements for the liberation, the total liberation of the Southern Cameroons, for our total freedom, for the total independence of our land, for the real colors of this gentleman to be revealed. First, Frundi granted an interview on CRTV from afar, on which he shouted that uh, leaders of the Southern Cameroon's liberation movements, of uh, the Ambazonian cause, should be captured and returned to Mr. Paul Bia for his launch. Of course, unfortunately for Frundi, he received a huge slap from the government of the United States of America just days after that misguided outing. As in response, the government of the United States of America rather granted the temporary protected status to citizens of Cameroon. That was a big slap. So today, Frundi now has been redirected to take another angle. And that's what you see on the Guardian Post here. You see, Frundi strikes anglophone freedom fighters turned oppressors. That's what he says. And he warns Ambazonia will be worse than South Sudan. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Frundi, we may have some division in our meets and all or not, but we will never, never, ever get to Southern Sudan. To Southern Sudan. Because the people of Ambazonia, we all know what we want. We know who we are up against. You and Mr. Bia are frustrated because we are not united under one umbrella where it is, it is going to be so easy for you put to use money and corrupt and derail our movement, which is your favorite spot. He says, independence project will never be a reality and urges separate leaders to stop believing in the international community and dialogue with government to end crisis. Now, let's go piecemeal. Mr. Frundi says, the independence project will never be. Did you hear the word never? No mortal, I mean mortal, should ever use the word never. Too many people who use the word never ended up regretting sometimes just days, others just hours after. Because this is a third millennium and we are the never again generation. So Mr. Frudi, we had ejected the word never from the dictionary. It does not exist in our dictionary. It only exists in the dictionary of gerontocrats like you. And I want to say this very clearly to all those who think and reason like Mr. Frundi. Bear it in mind, whether you like it or not, that because you never, first of all, believed in your own cause, that is why very early at the heart of it, you gave up, joined the dining table of the same oppressor and joined them to oppress the same people who stood with you but without letting us know that's what you were doing. Because, unknown to many, Frundi had become more dangerous than Bia himself. Because for many years, we continued to believe that Frundi was in the opposition. Whereas, he was now just a figurine, just a figurehead, playing Mr. Bia's games to ensure that Bia stays in place, to ensure 
that he perpetuates his corrupt and evil system and to ensure that he continues to enslave us. No one took note. It took the emergence of the consortium in 2016. And then the advent of the broader Southern Cameroon's liberation movement with several groups, movements, and organizations to get from the way he is today so that we all know now who he is and what he has stood for all this while. Let me make this clear. Because you never believed in your own dream and you abandoned it. You feel that is the same like us. Perhaps he was caught by age and told himself, why should I keep fighting? By the way, I'm getting old and I'm going, I'll no longer be there. And so there is no point. Let me eat my own now. Let me take my own share now. And then those who come after, if they want to fight, they'll continue fighting. But you never shifted to allow room for the younger generation anxious to pay the ultimate price. Anxious to take the sacrifice to another level to ensure that we get the freedom. Today, our eyes are open. We are all woke. We have risen from slumber and we will never go down again until we attain that independence. Mr. Frundi, the only thing I pray is that God gives you long life so you stay and watch and watch the people of the Southern Cameroons dance in Bongoe Square in Boya to the tune of our total independence and freedom because that day is near and that day is coming. By day and by night, our people are asserting their right to self-determination. And that's why Mr. Fundi today, you can only talk from the land of the oppressor. You can't come back to your own land because the same people who were ready to die for you now know who you are. And that is why this bickering. And interestingly enough, the resisting that he says, and I'd like us to pay attention to it very importantly, he urges separatist leaders to stop believing in the international community and dialogue with government to end the crisis. Now, Mr. Frundi, you have been in the opposition for over 30 years. I mean 30, over three decades. You started dialogue with Mr. Pobia in 2010 when we called it brushing off the clusters of thorn. From that day, 2010 to today, how many years are we? How many years? Count them. You have 2010 all the way to 2020, 2022. 12 long years. Where has your dialogue ended? With that same government of Mr. Paul Beer, where has your dialogue ended? You never believed in the international community. You believed in local arrangements. Where did your dialogue take you? Of course, the dialogue of money changing hands. The dialogue of just let us win this few number of seats to stay in parliament. At least to continue to have room to get some little kickbacks. The dialogue of, although we don't have enough... Uh, Councillors, let's go for the um, uh, senatorial elections and hope against hope because something can happen. They can do some kind of mago mago. Uh, allow me that expression. And allow us some seats there just for us to continue to do the make believe and earning. That one is not what the people of the Southern Cameroons want. Mr. Paul Bia and Mr. Frundi, continue to tell yourself lies. And believe them. Because for the people of the Southern Cameroons, we know who Paul Bia is. And we know minutiously, detailedly, there will never be any internal dialogue between the Republic of Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons. Because this falls within the domain of international law. These are two separate countries involved in a conflict. What kind of, what nature of dialogue you want to see that organized with Mr. Paul Bia? This is not a local derby. It is an international Champions League match. So, Mr. Frundi, inform your master, Paul Beer, that we will never be carried away or derailed by such stupid suppositions. Because, just so you know, even 
influential members on the international scene are telling the rest of the world it is only through an internationally mediated settlement that the conflict between the southern Cameroons and La Republic du Cameroon will be resolved. And that will be an opportunity for us before international actors to agree on the terms of our separation. So Mr. Frundi continued to talk to Mr. Paul Bia and the other people, I hate to use the word enablers, and the other so-called elite who have exiled themselves and are now living as refugees in La Republic du Cameroon. Just so you know, Ambazonia is real. You organize a dialogue. You talk about dialogue. You organize a dialogue called Grand National Dialogue. And which you, Mr. Frundi, attended. How did it end? They gave you special status. They gave, eh? I use the word gift. What a shame. Where did you end with it? And where does it stand now? They gave you a house of chiefs in Bamenda. Where is its president? Have you raised your voice to ask where that the president of the house of chiefs is? So, my people, this is the never again generation. Frundi today is more or less a loser. There was a time he played his role. And I think that time lasted right up until maximum 2010, where he gave up on his own dream, on his own hope and aspiration, which is something the people still believed in. And from that moment, he became a loser. And that is why today he speaks more and only perhaps like a loser. And that is why today he is being guarded permanently by the same people from whom we were guarding him. Oh, this is interesting. In his lifetime, not after. So my people of Ambazonia, we must continue to believe in our freedom. I'm going back to my brother Don Dinga because he doesn't joke. I don't know why Frundi is not on this picture. Because look at, that's Kavai Yege Jibril. That's him here. And that is not defending myself. All of them too vegetable. And see who they are addressing. Atanga Ponji and John Gute. That is food. Huge chicken there on the table. Now see the part that they are offering to them. Les enfants prenez cette jambe. Look at what they call jambe. It's calling the fingers. It's, let me call it in that way. Uh, jamb. And see the way they are standing. Miserable. Why these people are carefully seated at table. This is why I say, my brother Dondinga, I don't know where you are. Somebody should give you one man. Even two. Now it should be two in my name. Frundi should be part of this picture. Because it should be the third person standing there. In fact, there are supposed to be many more of them in this picture. Because it's exactly who they are and this is what they are looking for. Food. Common food. If I were talking in pidgin language, I would say Nalanga. That is all what has caused them to lose their senses. That is all what has caused men, able-bodied men, to become more or less women. Oh, how I shake my head. In forlorn thoughts of the time when men were still men, where these ones too could be referred to as men. But today, they have all been reduced to vegetable. How time has had its effect on them. Like I said, today's communication was simply to open our eyes to this kind of games that don't have a future and to remind our people that as real as life is and as real as death is, that is how real Ambazonia is. That is how real Southern Cameroon is. Free, free, free at last. We will be free, whether Paul Bia likes it or not. I want to 
end this communication today by extending hearty regards to all our heroes on ground zero. All. I don't care whichever camp you are, who you are working with, who you are standing for. First and foremost, you are an Ambazonian freedom fighter. And to you, I doff my heart. I want to extend hearty regards and congratulations to all our brave market women, the traders, all the business people in southern Cameroon for braving all the odds always to maintain Monday, our country Sunday, holy. This is very important. I want to congratulate all of you for standing firm. And I want to congratulate all our people in the diaspora for continuing to hold tight and remaining focused on our freedom. The few who are derailed, who are confused, who are playing the game of La Republic, their numbers are dropping every day. Every day those numbers are dropping. And gradually we will attain the level where all those voices completely disappear or are simply reduced to their barest expression because the voice the sound of freedom is so strong that it always ends up drowning all other forms of cacophony that seek to overcome it to god be the glory